guess where I am at this very moment. Actually, by the time you watch this, I'll be back home. But right at this very moment, I am on Sanibel Island, the south beach facing south out of Sanibel Island. The sun just set. It looks like an A-bomb went off, but that's really just... Okay, that's what it really looks like. And the beautiful surf behind me in early January. While it's snowing in Colorado, it's a blessing to be here. But speaking of blessings, you're a blessing, and I appreciate you very much. Welcome to Recordology. Okay, so today we're taking another look at an Angel's Horn product. Uh, for those of you that have seen our other Angel's Horn videos, you'll be curious to see how this turns out, as am I. And I got my coffee there. It's early in the morning. I got great daylight. If you saw my recent videos about the ring light, you know I prefer the daylight much so. So this is a big box for a record player, you may be saying, and you would be correct because this is an all-in-one solution. This is a sound system in a box. So it's going to have speakers and a turntable, I think. This is the Angel's Horn HP H00501 turntable system. By the looks of the picture on the box, it has a pretty hefty looking tone arm. It is two speeds, it has Bluetooth, and it is belt driven. So let's get into it, you guys. And I just want to be a better person, I deserve this, I just want to break these chains Always asking for greatness, true to myself, I never fake it Seen too many ones, I just so they get famous And when I say the truth, most really can't take it In spite of everything I've been through, I'ma make it Fake friends, but I'm a downfall, it's toxic Day one, started to outlaws for profit no, All I do is write verses, no talking All I do is put the work in, no option Okay, first impressions are that it was packaged very well So that was good to see The speakers, everything just so far it looks really good. Got all the accessories. I do like the fact they've included an extra belt. I'm presuming that's an extra belt. Also, another first impression I had was that this platter, and this by the way is a completely different design than the other uh, turntable from them that we reviewed a couple of times. But this platter is heavy. This is close to the weight of the LP7 platter. This has to be like a cast iron or something it is super heavy so anyway let me go ahead and get things unwrapped a little bit and we'll take a closer look okay i just want to double down on my comments about this packaging because it is it's good i can tell it's i mean always to me the packaging tells us something about their own opinion of their product that they want it to last they want it to get to you in good health all that good stuff so our counterbalance is in there typical blocking materials, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm gonna unwrap the rest of this and we'll take a good look. Okay, before we look at the turntable itself, I wanted to look at some of the accessories, things that come with it. Let's start with these speakers. So they feel hefty. You know, usually speakers that come with a turntable, this is like the first thing they cut down on in terms of cost. Um, they issue cheap speakers, oftentimes with fake tweeters, et cetera, et cetera. But these don't feel like that. These feel like a legit good bookshelf speaker and a couple things really impressed me by the way i love the finish this is the walnut finish little sneak peek of the turntable it just looks gorgeous i mean the, the color of the wood and i know it's probably a laminate you know but whatever it looks great but let's look at this i mean we got legit tabs and if you look in there my friend you will see an actual tweeter so there is a driver in there it's a 10 watt driver the overall power of the speakers is 18 watts four ohms and I think that that is a very good sign. We've got rubber feet on the bottom. We've got a cloth grill. Unfortunately, the grill doesn't remove. I mean, you can't, at least not that I can tell, it doesn't pull off easy. I feel like I would destroy it if I did that. So it would be nice to have the removable grill because I like an exposed speaker, but at the same time, this looks sharp. I'm already kind of thinking this might, this might be a great living room system. I don't currently have a, you know, a dedicated sound system uh, with the TV, but this, this looks good. This looks good. Now, if I move these out of the way, up in the upper right, you'll see the dust cover. It's kind of like a Where's Waldo moment there, but it is clear and it seems of, you know, good quality. It's got the little rubber, you know, pieces here. It's just so hard to film. That's why I'm not holding it up. Little rubber pieces there to sort of dampen the lowering action. The uh, clip receptacle on the back seems to be good. I mean, these, it seems like a good polycarbonate lid. So I'm, I'm glad to see that. But let's um, take a look at some of the accessories that came in the bag. Let's see what that looks like. 
Okay, this comes with a 24 month full warranty, it says, and a 90 day refund option, as well as 24 hour customer support. So I like the fact that they're, you know, including, they're going out of their way to say, we're gonna be there. We're not just gonna leave you hanging. I think that's a good thing. So there's sort of the card explaining that. You can email for support, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, they also give you a pretty minimal manual. Um, you know, it gets the job done. This kind of cracks me up. It's an alignment protractor, so you can align the cartridge. I'll explain why that makes me crack up in a minute. Uh, we've got a machined metal counterbalance here. This is cool. It's got it's hard to see on camera, but there's like ridges in there. It feels a little lighter than I think it should. I don't know if it's definitely metal with a plastic dial, but it might just be my imagination. I don't know. We've got the typical cheap 45 adapter. I really wish they would do better at those. This is a little key to help you put, man, my hands are dry. A little key to help you put on the belt, which is a nice touch. I like that. And speaking of belts, that wasn't an extra belt. That was the belt. So it just happened to be detached. Standard gauge speaker wire, nothing to write home about there. It is uh, powered by a DC power supply here. And let's see, this one is a 15 volt. So that's kind of unique, interesting. Well, hopefully got enough length there. I am impressed with this quick start guide. They have a nice quick start guide. And, you know, I like the fact that they use a black and white image with an orange arrow to show the, the point of action there. It shows you how to set the tone arm balance, all that stuff, put the belt on, connect the wires, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's, a, that's really nice. So in fact, this seems more useful than this. Okay, time to check out the turntable itself. I'm excited. I love checking out new equipment that I've never seen before. So the plinth is going to be probably an MDF or fiberboard with a laminate walnut veneer, uh, which looks gorgeous. Sometimes the resolution, cause it's essentially a picture. Um, you can see like pixelization and stuff, even in wood grain, which is annoying. This one looks pretty good. This one looks pretty good. It's clearly a digital image. I mean, you can kind of see, but it, uh, it looks good. It's pretty believable. There's a close look at it. I think it's a nice look to it. Um, there is the motor mount pulley. There is the main bearing, which is a flat recessed bearing. I think that's fine. Here's a first look at the tone arm. Now this tone arm is metal. It's pretty beefy. This is metal. Even this part back here is metal, which is rare because a lot of times this is plastic. Um, the base on this is going to be a plastic, a metal lift, metal machined knobs. And then our old buddy, the Audio Technica 3600 cartridge, which are in pretty short supply. More on that in a future video. Uh, but yeah, that looks good. It's got a good weight to it. It's quite heavy. I wouldn't say very heavy, but it's, you know, it's hefty. It's got a good heft to it. Let's look at the bottom. Underneath, we've got these rubberized feet that, you know, just screw into the wood. So there isn't a lot of play. There's no pivot or anything, but it's a, it's a chunky, solid rubber foot. I don't know if it's adjustable. There is the bottom of the main bearing. It's simply a bolt, but there is a ball bearing there in the middle. So when we put the sub platter on, that will probably rest on the other side of that ball bearing. And then over here, we've got a little plastic cover that, you know, is, you know, where the wiring to this, because this wood is probably chiseled with a channel where that wiring goes into this main box, which is where all the guts are. And the third foot back here, it is a three footed turntable, which will give the best stability is right there. So it's kind of uh, isolated from the rest of the components. This is a plastic box. I would have liked to see that metal, but this one is plastic. Let's look at the back for connections now. All right, so we've got the RCA outputs, including a grounding post. So if you use the uh, built-in preamp, which is the line setting, you only need to connect the left and right. But if you use the external phono level where you're using your own preamp, then you would need all three of those. There's the power input. I'm not sure what this is, perhaps a vent. Speaker connections. This does have a built-in amplifier. It's driving the speakers. This is an all-in-one turntable system in the sense that you don't need uh, powered speakers. You don't need an external receiver, anything like that. It's all in one and then the on and off switch and that's why this box is a lot bigger than a lot of the other ones so pretty simple there's a close look at the hinge there that's a standard issue i think that that will do nicely now let's take a look at the main bearing and the sub platter so the sub platter itself is uh 
I keep saying standard issue, but this is a pretty typical plastic sub platter. It is a pretty heavy ABS with a metal rod in the middle. And what's good about this is I've tested this before, but if you drop this down, notice how it doesn't like go down. It kind of, it's a tight, tight fit. You can see how that the air kind of creates a vacuum effect and there's some, some sponginess to it. And then when it goes down there, it seems like it's got a really good connection. I don't think we'll have any issues with platter wobble, which is a excellent thing. And it spins for a while. I think that's good. Now let's go ahead and put our belt on. The belt will go around the sub platter and onto the spindle of the motor drive shaft, just like that. Simple, simple stuff. You could use the key. Some people freak out about touching the belt. I don't. Um, but yeah, you would use the key like this if you wanted to, where you just use it to hold it and then stretch it around just like that. Give it a couple of turns so that the belt settles into a decent position on the sub platter. There's no channel for the belt, but it doesn't really need it. It's not going to fall off. I like the fact that they're using this type of a mechanism. This is a lot better than the kind where the belt is on a sub platter underneath the platter itself. And speaking of platters and saying the word platter a lot, in 60 seconds. Let's <laughs> look at the platter. It's still wrapped up. So pardon me for a second. Also, if, if you're new here, you may be wondering what the beeping sound is in the background. That would be my assistant Yoshi the bird, who is the assistant director and comments from time to time with a little beep. So hopefully that doesn't bother you. We've got a branded angel's horn felt slip mat. It's a pretty rigid, typical, I'm not going to say standard issue again. <laughs> <laughs> That's the word I get hung up on. Have you ever noticed if you go to a job interview, sometimes you'll get hung up on a word and you just keep saying it over and over again? Well, I do that in videos. So today's word of the day apparently is standard issue or phrase of the day. But that's that. Now the platter itself is this beast. This thing is a, I don't know if this is, probably it's steel and uh, not really cast iron, but it is heavy. It is heavy, heavy, heavy. And then this, We'll just sit on top of that. Why do they make these heavy? It's for mass inertia. So as this rotates, it'll gather mass inertia. By the way, let's look at the platter wobble there. Not too bad. A little bit of movement, not too bad. Uh, and so with the idea of, you know, things in motion tend to stay in motion, once this starts gathering momentum and inertia, it will overcome the little variables and differences in the electric motor because the motor itself is not going to be 100% accurate. No electric motor is. So there's going to be little, you know, speed up, slow down moments, and that's overcome through the belt and the fact that the platter is super heavy. So that's why they do that. Okay, let's go ahead and float the tone arm and go from there. Okay, I'm going to put about 2.6 grams on this guy, which I think is pretty good. And yeah, I mean, it's a uh, so far so good. I'm excited. I can't wait to hear how these speakers sound and everything like that. So while we're kind of close here, let's take a look at these controls. So this will be the volume, not on and off, because as you saw, there was a button on the back there. We got the two speed select and the Bluetooth. This will receive Bluetooth. So you can hook up your phone to it to listen to your phone through those same Bluetooth speakers. Um, a word about that protractor and why I was chuckling a bit. As you can tell, this tone arm head shell, which is just a, they just took the tubular tone arm and stamped it flat does not allow for you to adjust the lateral motion of the cartridge. So you really don't need a protractor because it's factory set, you, which basically means that it can't be adjusted you know, left or right is what I'm trying to say for those of you that are wondering what in the world I'm babbling about. So to have the uh, protractor is cool, but it's not extremely useful on this. <laughs> By the way, if you want to see details on how to set, how to use a cartridge alignment protractor or how to even set the, the tone arm counterbalance like I just did, we've got uh, hundreds of videos that will you know, satisfy those curiosities for you. Okay, we are set to rock and roll at this point. I'm going to connect the speakers and also put on the dust cover for a minute so you can see what it looks like all put together. I was connecting everything. I got to thinking it's kind of interesting how even though it's designed to work with these speakers that come with it, they also include not just a line out, but a phono output too. So you can use this as a standalone turntable without even these speakers involved. Now, surely that's because they sell this in a version without the speaker. So it functions as a standalone turntable with or without the built-in preamp. So I think that's cool. I just think so far I'm very impressed. I haven't heard anything. We haven't tested the speed accuracy, but I've got no red flags. I've got no issues. 
which I'm surprised and happy to see. So now let's see if I'm you know, surprised to hear what I hear. I wanted to show with the dust cover on real quick. It's super reflective, so I'm gonna take it right back off, but there it is, it looks sharp. I wish this was smoked. I was like a smoked uh, dust cover, but still, I love a hinge dust cover. And that's, you know, that's a requirement for me, you guys. So let's uh, take the dust cover off and spin some vinyl. But not before testing the speed accuracy. So we're gonna put on my trusty stroboscopic disc and let's get down in there and look at these three rings right here. So we've got the LED ring light on so we'll be able to tell really quickly and clearly. This is two speeds, so we're just gonna be looking right here for 33 and right there for 45. Right now I've got it set to 33. I am turning the unit on and let's spin this up and see how accurate it is. So again, we are looking right there. We want those lines to appear still, which they look just about perfectly still. That's incredible guys, out of the box, super accurate speed. I mean, it is a hair marching to the left. So it is a hair fast, but that, that is a threshold right there. That is a very acceptable, acceptable variance, especially because once the needle touches down on the record, it's gonna introduce drag, which will slow it down. So this is probably dead accurate, which I'm excited to see. All right, going up to the next ring now, this is gonna be 45 RPM. And they're usually very similar to each other. And so is this. Wow, you guys, this is nice. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that this is doing so well. Okay, I'm gonna reset the shot up and we are truly gonna listen to some vinyl now. Okay, so we are going to play a little Emile's telegraphic transmission device. This is a 45 RPM record. And I'm gonna hit the once over lightly. I'm on the stereo front facing microphones now. So here we go. Super excited, you guys. Sounds good. The speakers definitely have some bass. Let me listen to the high end. I'm gonna have to listen to some more music. It's, it's hard to tell. It's obviously we're listening to a recording, right? So it's hard to tell if it's a good recording, a bad recording, etc., etc. So let's go ahead and try some other music. So far, it is uh, sounding good to me, though. Let's go ahead and uh, try something completely different. I'm going to play a 33 RPM record. This is going to be Enoch Light because he is copyright friendly. Not the usual Enoch Light though. I'm gonna play this uh, seven inch disc, which I don't use as frequently. It doesn't sound quite as good as my quadraphonic disc, but at the same time, it is uh, something different. And I wanna just change it up because we've used that, that one record so many times. And I have, I need to spend some time digging up some other good test material, so but I know this one will be good. So let's check it out as well. I'll switch this to 33 RPM. Sounds good. And the high ends do sound good on these speakers. I mean, these are good little speakers. This is cool. This is a cool little turntable. I like it a lot. And the volume, by the way, what I just had it at was right about 50%, which was loud in the room. It was very loud. Great stereo separation. I don't know if you noticed, but even the uh, wires going into the cartridge are insulated all the way up to the cartridge, which is, I'm seeing quality here, guys. I am really excited, I'm surprised. If you watched our first Angel Horn video series, it didn't go as good as this. So I was really skeptical, honestly, and uh, but at the same time reserving judgment because this unit 
is proving itself to be a very good unit. So I'm thankful for that and I'm excited. All right, let's test out a little rock and roll next. Time for a little quo. Now, Adrian, my friend, is smiling right now because he's got me hooked on this band. <laughs> Not very well known here in the US, but uh, very famous abroad. So I've been very much enjoying their music and this is a great excuse to listen to this record a little bit more. I love it. It was a wonderful gift. I'd love to find more of their records, but there are few and far between over here. So that's a goal of mine this year, to collect more Quo records. I'm looking forward to finding some. Um, okay, so these are going to be a little more copyright restricted. So what I'm going to do is just play like a few seconds of every song on this side, and we'll give it a little bit of a sample. So let's listen to this record. <laughs> Now, I don't usually do Bluetooth tests, but if I don't, somebody's like, why don't you just do the Bluetooth test? So I said, you know what? Heck it. Today we're doing it. So I've got my phone connected to this device. It, again, it will receive Bluetooth. It's not transmitting Bluetooth. So my phone's audio is now going to come through these speakers. So let's give it a little listen. Wish I could play more, you guys, I really do. So I found out this is actually cast aluminum, which I can't believe they can get aluminum that heavy. I thought for sure that was steel, but it says cast aluminum, and man, that's a heavy platter. This thing is incredible. It's got four and a half stars on Amazon. I'm gonna wholeheartedly thumbs up this device. I would highly, highly recommend it. Price point, it's 265 right now on Amazon, which may sound like a lot up front, but if you think about it, these are good solid, you know, $125 speakers. If they were powered for this quality and this wattage, I think 100 to 120 ish is what you would get or what you could expect to pay for speakers of this quality, which are, they're good. They're very good. And the volume is great. The quality, the accuracy, there's nothing negative about this. So if you were to take, you know, 100, 265 minus 100 even for the speakers, you're down 165. Now you're even below like a U-turn orbit. So with the added Bluetooth functionality and the fact that it's got the built-in amplifier, this is priced appropriately and it is a good quality product. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Let me, down, let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts are. And again, link is in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Oh my, how our scenery has changed. Well, that's gonna do it for today, guys. I'm out here on Lake Evergreen. If you saw the promo from yesterday, you will have known that I am out here on a frozen lake, praying that a snowball doesn't get lobbed at me yet again, which it probably, hello! Fishermen, fisherwomen, kids skating. Ugh, snow, frigid temperatures on a solid lake. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time. Ooh, it's dangerous out here, mostly because my wife keeps throwing snowballs at me.